Hello and welcome to another fantastic audio tutorial. My name is Dave Bodie for Tuts Plus, and thanks so much for checking out this video. This is the first video in a series of videos based around building percussion beds and textures using Heaviosity's Damage. So what is Damage? Damage is a contact library, and it's marketed as the ultimate virtual instrument for epic, hard-hitting percussion stylized with a gritty hybrid sound. It seems like all percussion libraries released in recent years like to use the word epic to describe what they bring to the table, but, but this one fits the bill pretty well. It's a collection of organic drums with eccentric percussion and found sounds like exploding cars and broken pianos focused into tempo-synced rhythmic loop suites and menu-style percussive hits and kits. Damage is arranged in two main percussion categories. We have rhythmic suites and percussive kits. Within the rhythmic suites category, we have two sub-menus. We have loop menus and single loops. And within the percussive kits, we have five subfolders organized by genre. We have epic organic drums, ethnic drums, metals, hybrid effects and hits, and damage kits. The Rhythmic Suite has over 700 beat sliced loops. This category covers four main genres. We have Epic Organic, Epic Tech, Industrial, and Mangled Pop. Loops are a big part of this library, but that's a subject for another day. So what we will be looking at in this in the next few tutorials are the percussive kits. The percussive kits contain over 200 deeply sampled percussion sources and over 500 individual single shot elements. These percussive presets provide playable kits, single shot hits, and tweaked drum-like kits in a wide range of styles. These are great for creating some really unique percussion for your compositions. And under percussive kits, we have four main types of kits that we'll find here. We have round robin kits with a mixer, and that's what we're looking at over here. These are comprised of what they call deeply sampled percussive sources and are good for more intricate based beats because the samples have round robin, which means there's multiple variations of each instrument hit and they're recorded with multiple velocity layers. So you have a range of dynamics to work with. Then you have single shot kits with a mixer and these are single shot samples, but have three variations of microphone. We have a close, a room and a hall, just like we do with these round robin kits. Then we have single shot damage kits like this guy right here. These are comprised of single shot affected drums arranged in the style of a particular drum kit sound. These are good for drum beats with glitchy affected tweaked sounds and you can further tweak the sound and do all kinds of cool things with these trigger effects here, which we'll look at later in the series. Then we have hybrid effects kits, which are single shot hits, impacts and tails. These hybrid hits are suitable for trailer like stings and transitions or emphasis when you wanna punch up a big section of your composition. So that's kind of the overview of what damage is. The whole library comes in at about 16 gigabytes, but that's compressed. So the whole library contains about 30 gigs of sounds and that much percussion, I mean, when you think about it, is actually quite a lot. So what I have loaded up here is a couple of kits that I just wanted to run through and show you kind of the interface here with the percussive kits and then we'll leave loops for another time. So this is one of their round robin kits. This is the Perk Studio Armageddon Ensemble. We have kind of these, these tom things here. These big monster hits. These brushes on toms. Some snares. And then a whole bunch of sticks. So it's, a, it's a, got a really big kind of feel for it. And so on the main page here, we have this master effects section here where we have distortion, lo-fi, reverb, delay, compression. And these are global effects, so they affect all of the drums. Then we have an amp envelope over here, and this controls attack, decay, sustain, release globally of all of the microphones. And then we have individual close room and hall that we can control. Then we have this little mixer section in the middle here where we can mix the close room and hall microphones. We have a key sensitivity down here, and then we have a tuning knob. Now the tuning is not a global tune, that's for that's for each individual drum. You can see if we want to tune this up. We see that those keys that are affected there are only the ones that are being tuned. So that's pretty cool. Then we jump over to this stage 
tab here. And this is a pretty cool feature of damage. It basically lets you place the instruments in a three-dimensional field, if you will. So closer here, if we take... These are gonna sound closer, and as we push this farther away, they're gonna sound further away, which is pretty cool. And we can also control the pan. And so we can do that for every instrument in here, which is very cool. So if there's a particular sound and you want that right up in your face, you can do that, it's pretty easy. Then over here on the EQ and filter page, we have a global equalizer. So this is for all of the sounds. Then we have a per drum equalizer, which is very, very cool. So if there's one of these that you wanted to really bring out some low beef or some high sizzle, you can do that. And this is a parametric EQ, so you have frequency, you have boost or cut, and then you have the width of the Q over here. Then we have the filter section. This is basically high pass, low pass, and we have a global setting for that, and then a per drum high pass, low pass as well, which is very cool. Tremendous amount of tone tweaking just in the interface itself. Then, we have the big old knob right here. This is the punish knob. So we click this on. And this is a combination of compression and distortion. It just really makes the sounds in your face. As opposed to. You know, obviously too much of that is going to be out of control, but some of it, a little bit, can sound really cool. So that just gives you a flavor of what Damage is all about. It's a big, big library, and there's a lot of stuff. I mean, just in the organic drums, we have all these different things. We have the Armageddon Ensemble, Plastic Ensemble, Concert Bass, Drum Kit, yada, 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 a lot of cool stuff. Then we have ethnic drums. And there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in here as well. We have metals, which is a whole bunch of cymbals, hybrid effects kits. These have all the big, huge hits. We have a piano that's just been mangled, all kinds of hits and impacts and tails, which are awesome for trailers and stings and transitions and things of that nature. Then we have the damage kits, and these are kind of the real affected drums. And so I have one pulled up here. And so this has a lot of the same controls that we just looked at as far as the master effects. Those are all the same. Amp envelope, although you don't get multiple microphones. So this is just kind of a master attack decay sustain release thing. We do have a level and tune and pan for each one shot in here. There's an amp sequencer that's pretty cool. Then we have these trigger effects, which are really, really cool. And you can see these are all key switched, so you can punch these in and punch these out. So it's a really cool way to kind of punch up these glitchy sounds, and uh, it's got all kinds of cool effects here with delay, filter envelopes. It's all kinds of really, really cool stuff there. And then the same EQ settings as before with the big old punish knob. So really, really cool stuff. One of the things that I wanted to show you in this video is how you go about using this. You know, libraries and plugins, they're fun to play with, they're fun to explore, but how easy is it to use? How does it play with other libraries, other virtual instruments? What we're gonna look at in this series is a couple of short little compositions here that basically show what these sound like and how I go about kind of building some textures using this library. So I have here a little, uh, a little composition that I threw together. It's really short.
needs a little tweaking in the mix, but uh, that's pretty much it. I wanted to throw just a little orchestral thing together really quick and just give you an idea of what this sounds like in that kind of setting. So let's go through what's going on in here. This is the main contact instance that has most of the percussion elements in it. And you can see I'm using a couple of instances of damage in here. I'm using that Studio Armageddon Ensemble because that's kind of a great all around thing to use with this quote unquote epic drum feel. It's got a lot of cool elements, the, the brushes, the tom hits, the, the monster drums, the rim clicks. Then I'm using one of their medals. This is a medals menu, small, and we'll go through what that is. Uh, symbols. And then I have some other percussion libraries in here too. This is part of the Drums of War by Cinesamples, and it's a one-shot shaker, which I think is a really cool shaker sound. This is a new one that I haven't talked about too much. This is Drum Circle by Waves Factory that was recorded using a bunch of different drummers in this huge studio. And so it has this big beefy drum sound. And so I'm using some toms and kicks from this too. And we'll check that out in a second. And I'm using some dark impacts here, again from Damage, a little timpani, and then piano, which isn't, well, it's kind of percussive. It's not traditionally what you'd think of as a percussion instrument, but it is in fact a percussion instrument, something being struck with a hammer. So let's break down what's going on with these percussion tracks here. This is kind of the main percussion track here, and this is that Armageddon ensemble. And so when the drums come in here, it's got a really simple groove that's going on. And that's how I like to build out percussion textures. Really easy to, you know, busy up stuff, especially, you know, there's a lot of awesome sounds in this particular patch. And it can be really tempting to want to use all of them all of the time. But, you know, I kind of look at it as we only have so many cards to play in the length of a composition. There's basically two dimensions in music. We have the harmonic or frequencies, which is high and low sounds. And then we have the time dimension, which is in a certain amount of time, how many things are happening, how many rhythms, uh, how many sounds are going on as the time rolls by. And so what I like to do is, is use kind of that way of thinking in how I build out my percussion track. So I don't want to have things busy all the time. I don't want to have things occupying all areas of the sonic spectrum all of the time because that doesn't give you anywhere to go. And also you have dynamics as well, you know, loud and soft stuff. So we start out with this more simple kind of drum groove here. And it just repeats, you know, it's nothing fancy. And then as we get into the bigger section here, we add some of these clicks here, these stick on the rim clicks, which I think are really cool. That's one of my favorite drum sounds. So that's, that's a pretty cool groove all by itself. Then when we get to the end, there's a little bit more busy stuff happening as the orchestra drops out. So that would be cool by itself, but I like to layer things. So I have another instance of damage here. This is the metals. So this has a bunch of different uh, sticks on cymbals and china cymbals and different clangy type stuff. This layer by itself sounds like this. It's really pretty simple. But the cool thing is when you combine that with this other groove here, it makes for a really nice texturing here. So, so that, metals thing happens right from the very beginning. And then these other drums are added to it. So we start off with this real high ticky sizzly thing, which is occupying the kind of high frequency space. And then we add to it a little bit of low and mid stuff with a little bit more punch. And then to that, we also have another damage and this is the symbols menu studio so this is all this is all different symbols recorded i'm guessing in the studio so these are just little hits to help kind of punch up the beginning here we have 
It's kind of a scrapey thing happening. That sounds like a stick on a china symbol. Just to kind of punch up the, the beginning. Then there's some rolls in here. These are kind of one-shot rolls. Just real, real simple stuff. With the exception of the big studio Armageddon ensemble, all of these other things, really not that interesting. If we take, if we take these two guys and we solo these, so these are the two kind of metal layers. And then in the second half of this, It's really starting to build to a nice texture. And then we add, we add the Armageddon Ensemble to that. Doing it this way, using some different sounds, some different variety of things, really gives a much more interesting effect as opposed to trying to create something that's extremely busy just using one patch and trying to use lots of the sounds in one patch. I like to pick a few sounds that I like, use those, create something that's, you know, simple. Usually I tend to create something that's a little bit busier and then I kind of shave it back. I'll, I'll delete some notes here and there. For example, I might record something like this. Then I'll fix it, because uh, there's little playing anomalies in there. Like that. You know, and then we have this kind of thing. So that might be too much brush stuff going on here. So I may, you know, find a section that's a little bit less busy or I'll just take a few notes here and delete them. But you know, a lot of it goes with, you know, what else is going on in the composition. And, you know, maybe I like just that. So I'll take that brush part and I'll just scooch it down and use it again. And then I'll use that as my two measure groove. Maybe I'll, I'll delete this guy and move it over here to beat four. So now I'm get this. You know, and that's pretty cool. I'll record an idea and, you know, maybe I like this kind of groove here. I got a little bit busier as I went on, which is usually the case. But, you know, I like these main hits. And I like that a lot better than what I did when it was really busy. And that gives me the room to be able to add some other flavors in there, where if I had had this really busy, when I try to add those other textures, those janglies, those tingly bits, those symboly stuffs, there wouldn't be any room because it would just be filled up with a bunch of junk. And so there's no room to work in there. So that's kind of my method for creating these loops and these patterns and things. You know, I start with something busy, then I usually shave it back and I, I dial it back. I reel it in. That's kind of the metaphor that I like to use. I, I go a little bit too far and then I like to just bring it back. I pull on the reins and, and slow that horse down there. So there you go. You know, with just these three guys here, make for a really cool sounding groove, I think. And that's using all of the stock settings as far as EQ, tuning. I didn't mess with it too much. Now, the other thing that I wanted to kind of show is how well this library works and plays with others because, you know, sometimes a library has almost the right sound, but it doesn't really go with a whole lot of stuff. I think some of the stuff in the Drums of War, they all kind of go together. They don't all the time. I, I don't think they play well with others because they, they just have a particular sound that I, I don't think just works. They're a little bit too pitchy, maybe, instead of uh, thuddy and wacky. And I don't mean wacky as in silly. I mean, wacky is like, you know, you just whack something and it doesn't have a distinct pitch. And so they don't really play super great with others, but I think uh, damage definitely does. And so 
one of the things that I like to add to a lot of these percussion textures is shaker. It's kind of something that can sit in the background and really help to give it a little bit more edge, a little bit more detail in the high frequency stuff. And I admit that what you just heard when I initially played this, probably the shaker is a little bit too loud, but I just wanted to kind of bring that out and show you what was going on there. And so we basically have three little patterns here. A little bit busier when it kicks into the main section here. And then a little bit more busy when we get into the big section. This is one of my favorite patches from Drums of War 2. Works really, really well because it's so short. It's small, it's light. And here's what just the high frequency stuff sounds like here. You know, if you had heard just the shaker part by itself, You'd say, oh, that's probably, that's not going to work. That's too busy. But when you hear it with these other, these other tones and pitches, it, I think it really works nice to kind of, it fills in the gaps and really gives a nice kind of driving, you know, it's really cool the, the way that it works. Especially because there's a lot of other similar sounds in these other two damage patches. There's one of them that has kind of a, a hi-hat thing, which is very close in pitch and timbre to the shaker. And I think that works really well with the shaker. I probably would come down here into the audio return for that one shot and maybe pull it down a little bit more, maybe just a hair. So that guy's right here. Maybe I just drop it down. It's still in there, but it's not in your face like it was before. That's usually where I like to put the shakers there. Some of the other instruments here, we have timpani, which obviously doesn't need too much explanation. Timpani works with a lot of things. The other one that we have in here though is drum circle. And I think it plays really nicely with this. And in the menu, we can pick between eight, two and four players and we can have any combination of those. So you can have as many as 14, I think, uh, as few as two, and you know, basically any parameter of, of those um, by loading up the different modules. This, this is just using eight drummers. So it has this really cool kind of group tom thing, which works really, really well. And this is all it's doing, just that. Basically just some hits with the low tom and the kick drum. And that really helps to punch up what's going on here with this Armageddon Ensemble. Check it out. You know, I just threw this in there. Probably that could use a little bit of EQ. So take that guy, drum circle here. So I think there's some... I think there's some 200 hertz jazz in there that I don't really like. Yeah. It's kind of this woofy, honky stuff. Not really my favorite. And then we could probably maybe just boost up some stick tones here. We actually probably don't need too much of this low stuff. Whoa, that was the wrong one. High pass. We probably don't need too much of the super lows here because uh, that can get out of control really quick. That may help to kind of clean up the sub frequencies there. Yeah, it definitely does add just a little bit of punch. 
But what it does is it gives you the the sense, you know, it's not a it's not a drastically different sound, but it gives you the sense of more. There's a little bit more kind of variance in stick attack time. I mean, it just sounds like a whole army, you know? I mean, we have lots of, there's probably a couple of three, four players in the Armageddon Ensemble, and there's eight in drum circles. So, you know, that's a big, big thing. And, you know, we could even, we could dial up the, the whole business here in drum circle. You know, we could, we could add the other ones to it as well. I mean, that just sounds huge, right? I mean, it's a, it's a lot of players playing at the same time. So damage definitely works and plays well with others. And so all of these elements together here. Definitely very cool. And one of the things that I like about Damage is that it has it has some really nice cymbal elements too that work, I think, pretty well for orchestral stuff. You can't just use any old cymbal sound or library with an orchestral piece because I, I just don't think it works. It has to be kind of placed right to give that sense that you know the percussion is in the back or it's in a it's in a particular space that works well and you can do a little bit of massaging with reverb to do that as well but the cool thing about damage is it has a bunch of stuff that i think works really well just right out of the box with no no tweaking required so really quick the other stuff that's in this little composition it's really simple we have some cinematic strings here doing They're doing their string thing, you know, providing the bass for everything else to sit on. And then we have the rest of kind of the orchestra winds. We have a whole bunch of woodwinds, and that's being provided by Berlin Woodwinds, which is awesome. And we have contra bassoon, regular bassoons, clarinets, oboes, flutes, and piccolo. And so that sounds like this. Then we have the brass. This is a cinebrass here. So how I have this laid out here, I have trumpet section, trumpet solo, horn section. That's two horn players. Horn solo, trombone section, trombone solo, tuba and bass trombone, and then chimbasso and bass trombone. giant piano, it's just doing some real simple stuff, as well as the timpani in there, you know, just basically punching up some downbeats and things. A couple of crescendo rolls in there from the timpani, right here when we get into this. And the one instrument that I didn't show you, I do have another damage instrument here, and this is Dark Impact. So this has all kinds of big, huge kind of one shot. Big old huge impact. So I just use that really sparingly, I only use four of them there, just to punch up a few of the sections here. Now a big one at the end here. And that's this guy. Actually, that's that's not the right one. I think I'm gonna tweak that one. <laughs> it's got this weird kind of after trail. Yeah, I think that. One. Yeah, I think that might have been a B2. There we go. 
So that's pretty much it. Damage, really cool. It works so well for orchestral stuff. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. And we only used a tiny fraction of what this library contains. There's tons of good stuff. These ethnic drums are very, very good. Lots of round robin, lots of dynamic layers. Really, really cool sound here. They work in kind of the big quote-unquote epic feel as well as you know some more ethnic driven stuff where you know you have a really particular sound that you're going after this stuff works awesome for that and then the rest of this stuff we will look at in some future videos where we look at some different styles it's a really fun library to use and you can buy it individually but how i got it was part of the complete nine collection which comes with most of what Native Instruments offers as far as virtual instruments and synths and plugins and things. So it's a tremendous value. It's it's $2.99 US if you buy it individually, but as part of Complete 9, it's thrown in there. And, you know, Complete 9 comes with several thousand dollars of, of stuff in there. And occasionally, I think twice a year, Native Instruments puts Complete 9 on sale at 50% off. So at that point, Complete 9 is like, or the complete, the next one will be Complete 10, probably. It'll be $500. And so at that point, you get tons of other stuff with Complete 9. And you get this wicked $300 plug-in here, which is awesome. It's got to be one of the highlights of the Complete collection from Native Instruments. So really cool, works in a lot of stuff, and we'll look at more of that in some upcoming videos. But make sure to check back again when we look at using damage in some different styles in an upcoming video here. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Again, my name is Dave Bodie for Tuts Plus, and we'll see you around. Thanks for watching.